Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be talking about how we can use auto layout with multiple spacings. And the way that we do that is by creating spacer components. The benefit of using spaces is that one, you can use the power of auto layout to manage your content while maintaining multiple spacing heights. Two, you can visually see the spacing of your content through color. Three, you can be confident that the spacing in your project is consistent to the sizes you want. And four, you can hand over your designs to developers with the spaces already indicated. Before I teach you how to make spaces, I just want to do a quick revision of what auto layout is for those that may not have used it before. I think something to note first is that this text is sent to the button and you will see that when we add auto layout, that is going to move. So to make an auto layout, you first need to select some elements. So I'm just going to select these four elements. And to add auto layout, you just go right click, add auto layout, which the shortcut is also shift A. And you know you've made an auto layout when you look at the icon on the left, you can see the two rectangles, which indicate you've just made an auto layout, or this is an auto layout. And when you have an auto layout component, in the properties panel, you can see these new features. So we have this minus button, which obviously you just remove the auto layout. You have a direction, so vertical and horizontal direction. And currently it's in the vertical direction because we want the content to be stacked from top to bottom. And by default, it was vertical direction because that's what it was before I added the auto layout. We can also control the spacing between items. So currently it's at 16. But as you can see, there's only one input field, which means that if we were to auto layout all of this content, they would all be 16, which is not necessarily what we want because there's no real hierarchy in our information if they're all the same. We have padding around items, which we will not use, which essentially just means how much space do we want to give around our auto layout. So we're more concerned about the spacing within the auto layout, so which is why we can leave the padding at zero. And then we also have the alignment and padding. If you remembered, I said that the text was centered to the button. Now you can see the text is aligned to the left. And the reason is by default, the alignment is to the top left. You might be thinking, oh, why don't you just move it to the middle? But when I click on that, you can see one of my buttons, button components have moved to the middle, which is not what we want. And my recommendation is just to always keep it at the top left and try to work out how to fix all your other pieces of elements. So now we can go ahead and start prepping our content for auto layouts by just selecting all our content and adding an auto layout. But firstly, I'm just gonna remove the auto layout of this section. So we can use this minus tool or we can just right click, remove auto layout and also the ungroup tool actually removes auto layout as well. So I'm just gonna use the ungroup as you can see, now we have four elements separated. So we can just go ahead and select all the content and go right click, add auto layout. So having a quick look, all of this looks correct. So these flavor tiles are now stacked from top to bottom, which is not exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and just fix that up later. We have our icons and their labels. They're not stacked left to right. They're stacked top to bottom, which is also not what we want. So we have to fix that one and the text, it's not centered to these buttons. So we can go ahead and undo. So I'm just hitting Command C. Okay, now we're back to where we are. So let me just check all of these things are the right size. So I'm gonna hit Control G, which is my layout grids. Yep, so everything is aligned to those borders that I want. And if you don't know much about layout grids, I've created a video for you to watch. So definitely go check that out. So I'm going to turn off my layout grids with control G again. So firstly, this content, the easiest way to deal with this is to just group it. And the reason why grouping is a good um, feature for these elements is also because I've used the tidy up tool, which is in here, which is kind of grayed out because I've used it already, which essentially enable me to control the horizontal and vertical spacing, which I have at eight. If you don't know much about the tidy up tool, I can definitely create a video about that. But for now, to retain those features and this um, layout of these elements, I can just go right click, 
group selection. And the shortcut is just Command G. Next, I want to fix up these icons with the labels. And yet again, I can just use the group tool as well, but I don't want to use it for this section. For here, I want to use the auto layout tool. So for these sections, auto layout doesn't work because I need to control spacing from both the horizontal and the vertical spacing. But here we only need to control one direction of spacing. So it's easy to use auto layouts. So I'm just going to go add auto layout for all of my icons. Add auto layout. And as you can see, the biggest change is now the tops are aligned. So I have, if I double click into it, I have my icon and the top boundary and the text boundary, whereas we want it to be the center. So if you remember going through the alignment feature, if we select all of our auto layouts and go to our properties panel, we have the alignment and padding section. Instead of with the top, we can control it to be the left center, which fixes that. And we have a spacing of eight, which is what we want. Finally, we want to fix our text. The most simplest way to do this is we can just stretch the text to be the size of our button and we can go text align center. Very simple. Now that we have all those elements fixed up, let's go ahead and select them all again. Right click, add auto layout. And there we have it. All of our elements have retained their structure. And now we can go ahead and change the spacing. So for example, if I want to change it to 40, for whatever reason, you can see all these elements retain their shape. I'm going to put it back to 16. So now we have our auto layout set up. We can start and make our spaces. So I'm just using the frame tool shortcut F. And we want to make it the same size as our auto layout. So I can also turn on my grid again using control G. I'm just going to drag my frame in actually. And yep, we can see the width is 380. So we can just bring it out here. And I'm going to turn up my grids again by control G again. So we have our first spacer and we want it to be a height of eight. And I'm using the rem unit to create my spacing heights. And if you don't know much about rem units, essentially rem just follows the base font size, which is generally 16 pixels for most browsers. If you don't know much about rem, definitely have a quick Google, um, but I can also make a video about rem units if people are interested. So I'm just setting it up. So we have 8, 16, 24, and so it can be 48. And then I can go ahead and name these. So I'm just going to name it 8 pixel spacer. And let me just copy and paste this. So this one will be 16, which is one rem. So 8 is half a rem. And then this one's 24, which is 1.5 rem. And then this one is 48, which is 3 rem. And we can go ahead and change these colors just to make them all a bit different. Just picking, you can just pick any color. Like it's definitely easy if you use the rainbow, for example. So you know that red is bigger or smaller than yellow and yellow to green and green to blue. Oops, let's make it magenta. So now that we have our spaces, we can obviously just copy it in. Um, so for example, if I hold option, click drag, we have our spacer, but we do want to control them all in one go. And the way that we do that in Figma is creating components. So I'm going to create a component with all of these. And another feature of having all components is if you have a set of main components, you can select them all and combine as variants. And the power of using variants is that when you have a instance of one component, you can just change it to another. So as an example, let me just now copy this red one across. Oops, not the whole variant, sorry. Let me click on the red. I'm holding the option key, click dragging. Now with the red, we see this component 29 feature, which is the variant. And we can go ahead and change it to a different size if we want to. So because this is component 29, it's a bit confusing. So we can go ahead and change the title of our variants to just be spacers, very simple. And when I click on my spacer here, it also says spacer. 
as you can see, if I actually want to get to my spacer, I need to first go to my auto layout and double click to get into my spacer, which can be very time consuming. But if you also hold the command key and left click, that's called deep selection. So you can select the most detailed component, which is our spacer or the most child component. Or you can also use the layers selection tool. I don't know what it's really called actually. Layer selection, which is this command right click. As you can see, spaces. And that's just the image behind. So I don't really want to select that. So we have that as well. Another tool I want to talk about in variants is when you look at the property, you can see that eight pixel is last. So right now it's ordered in numerical order. So we have one, two, four, eight, but we want the eight to be at the top so we can order it by size. And the way that we do that is you just select on the variant title spaces and you can see these are our properties. So we can just move eight pixel spacer to be first. I don't know why it reads in two columns, but that's just how it is. So now if I deep select my spacer, and I check this drop down, eight is now at the top, which is perfect. And I'm gonna skip ahead, but essentially what I'll do is I will add spaces into all these elements. And as you can see, if I zoom in a bit, we have the text, then we have a order layout spacer, then we have the manual spacer that we've created, and then another order layout spacer. So what we actually wanna do is to make this work, we need to actually make this zero. Because we don't really need the order layout to add spaces for us, we can just manually add our own spaces. So what I'll be doing is I'll just be copying and pasting our spaces throughout um, this content selection. Before we move on, I just want to mention that when you create spaces, always use the frame tool because when we use the rectangle tool, um, it makes it really hard to deep select when we have it in this order layout section. So just to quickly show you, I'm just going to quickly create two components. I have them at the same size as the smallest two spaces. I am going to combine those variants and I'm just going to create one instance. So as you can see in the instance, we still have the properties to change from one size to the other. But when we look in our layers panel, a rectangle component has two layers. We have the component and the rectangle itself. Whereas if we click on one of these, let me just copy one of these over here, we only have a single layer. So what that actually means is when we actually drag our rectangle spacer, if we were to do the deep select, which is holding down the command key and left click, we actually select the rectangle layer and not the component layer, which means that we don't see the variant property. So we have to actually go to the layer panel and click on the component layer which enables us to see this property again. Or if we deep select, we've got to use the shortcut shift return, which also goes back to our parent layer. And also when we deep select and delete, as you can see in our layers panel, we actually just hide the rectangle layer and not delete the component, which is very annoying. So that, that's just a handy tip. Always use frames for your spaces. So now that we have all our spaces in, you can see some things are missing. So for example, these lines that were between these icons are now hidden behind these opaque spaces. So what we can do is we can just select all of our spaces and just make them a bit more transparent. So the shortcut is just using any numerical key on your keyboard. So for example, one is 10% and we can see our lines again, or we can go two for 20%, five for 50%. And to bring it back, you just hit zero for hundred percent. So I'm just going to go with two for 20%. And now that we can see all of our content and our spaces, and I won't really go into detail around how you should use spaces and what spacing sizes you should use. But as a general rule of thumb, you want to connect certain pieces of information that are related together. So for example, we have gift box and box your selection. Then we have this price, which all seem to be part of this first section of information. So we can go ahead and let's make them all smaller for now. So we'll just go with the eight. And these, this also looks like it's part of this. So we can make this eight as well. Oops, sorry, eight. 
And now this is a new section. So we're now talking about flavors. So we're happy with this large spacer. And you might find that um, the spaces that you select at first might be too small. So definitely don't be too stingy on your spacing. The more space you have, the better. So we have flavor selected, which sort of relates to this card. So we can go ahead and turn this into eight pixel spacing. And we can just go ahead and sift through all of our content. So there we have it. Now I've fixed up all of my spaces within my auto layout content. And yes, it might not be perfect, but I have the option of changing whatever I need to through the power of variance. And the best way or the best reason for why we do this is we can see the different types of content. So we have this pink to indicate the different sections that we have. And another handy tip is always try to use similar spacing types after selected pieces of elements. So for example, every time I use this text block with this font size, I use an eight pixel spacer. As you can see, I've repeated that so that in my design, there's a consistent rhythm. And now that we have that all set up, when you want to go and present, all you have to do is select all your spaces and we can just turn it off. Um, not through this eye button here, which seemingly does nothing, but we can just make it transparent. So we can type in zero here, or the shortcut is pressing your zero key twice. If it wants to work. There we go. And then if you press it once, you just bring it back to 100%. Hope you all learned something about water layouts and how we can use spaces to create manual types of spacing heights. That's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.